All right, welcome back. Episode 179 of Chaotically Intolerant, trying to remember. Um, we are doing this through the hurricane. It's been a little bit of a crazy week for me. I'm in Sarasota, Florida, so we are like directly in line. Um, so we're going to do about 30 minutes today. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We also just hit 10K on Instagram, so big, big milestone for us. Um, and we're moving towards uh, 10K on TikTok so, and 1K on YouTube. So thank you to everyone for that. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. All right, Mike. So big week. The, the NFL was weird. Um, let's start Bucks Falcons Thursday night. The best Thursday night game we've had in a really, really long time. Yeah. Oh my God. That was that was tremendous, right? Kirk Cousins. I, I keep thinking like, oh, one week. All right, if the Falcons win this crazy game, then they're going to come back to Earth again, and that's kind of what happened with the Chiefs game, you know. But they were close in that one, and God, Cousins is putting up crazy numbers. He was over. What he said a Falcons franchise record five oh nine four touchdowns. I mean, yeah. the guy. I, I will say this for all the grief that I've given him over the years, he makes for some exciting football. He just always yeah. seems to be on. T it's like, and he's not even that he's throwing tons of interceptions. It's just he's like an easy guy to. He's an easy guy to like, kind of personally. But as a quarterback, you're like he doesn't have a huge arm. He's not super mobile. He kind of looks goofy out there but man the guy just delivers um and the bucks have got to be kicking themselves because they had that game they just you know giving up the, the long drive and then one second left they get the spike and then can't stop it in overtime and so hey this division's a lot of fun i so i i have done some research over the last week you can actually thank my father for this i am completely going back on kirk cousins as mid um i think he has been unfairly judged He's been on some unfair teams. I'm going to go through his stats for his career, basically, from when he started 16 games or 17. 2015 was the first year he started 16 games. 4,100 passing yards, 4,900 passing yards the next year, 4,000 passing yards, 4,200, dipped to 36, 4,200, 4,200, 4,500 in 2022 with Minnesota. And then obviously last year he had about eight games, but he had 2,300 passing yards in eight games interceptions his most he's had his 14 interceptions which was also in 2022 in that year um i i think he's being unfairly judged i think we need to give kirk cousins his flowers even for the past i think he's been completely unfairly given the mid the mid uh accusation um especially because his teams have had horrible defenses a lot of his teams have yeah, and I don't know if the Falcons have a horrible defense. I don't know if it's a no. very good defense either. This guy's 36, but he's playing like a kid. He's been through injuries, comes back from a what a torn Achilles last year. I, I, I just like that he brought back. You like that, you know? He, he yeah. brought it back. So that's the and real Baker, win for everyone. If, I think you would be sick if I told you six years ago that Baker Mayfield and Kirk Cousins would be duking it out in a high-pressure Thursday night game for basically they're battling for the NFC South right now. They are going on a, this is going to be a season long battle for the NFC South. Um, well, yeah. So. And, and keep in mind that both of these guys, I think Baker's a lot of similarities in terms of here's a guy that maybe came in and wasn't in the right fit. And, and it's, you know, these guys that have left Carolina recently yeah. seem to do well. I don't know. To the Sunday games. Jets and Vikings, I don't even want to talk about... First off, Brian Flores is making a case for a head coaching position right now. And especially after how things went down in Miami, you would think he's not going to have... You're never going to see him as a head coach again, at least in the NFL, maybe in college. But this Vikings defense has been fantastic. They got three picks on Rodgers and a pick six. And they got Robert Sala fired as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, that'll, we'll have to save that one for another time. But... Um, Aaron Rodgers has had a lot of good games in his career against the Vikings. So this was one of those where people were like, well, maybe this is the day that the Vikings come back to earth. Darnold's numbers weren't good at all. He was 50.3 rating. He was under 50% completion. But I mean, that th there really is something good brewing with the Vikings. Like it's just, 
I, I don't know if it's just chemistry. It's coaching, obviously, with Kevin O'Connell. They've got good players, but it just feels like this is the right mix. They're finding ways to win games. And we know what the Jets franchise is all about. They find ways to lose. And um, interesting that uh, they made the move now with Salah. I guess they figure they still have a shot. They're only two and three. But I don't think Aaron Rodgers is the answer. I mean, how many more years does the guy have left? It's just this franchise, man. The Jets. I don't know how people can put themselves through it and be Jets fans. Yeah. Just don't know. Um. Yeah, uh, this you would have thought this would have been a really good week just for the Jets as a team to kind of come in there. You're facing a team that it's difficult to say if they've been proven or not in this league so far. Um, and, you know, it's obviously Aaron Rodgers, well-known foe, the Vikings in in London, a weird game. This was a perfect spot for the Vikings to collapse, especially now your offense kind of struggled. Sam Darnold looked like the Jets, Sam Darnold. Um, but that Brian Flores defense just stood up and did exactly what they had to do. Um, he's he's going to be a head coach. He might be a head coach. He might be a head coach for the Cincinnati Bengals because that'll be a perfect time. What a game, first off. Just one of the best games of the year, I think. 41-38 in overtime. Chaos galore. There was a, Henry was tackled for a safety. Six straight drives with touchdowns to open the second half. And then you have a missed field goal. Tucker nailing a 50 million yard field goal to tie the game with like a minute to go. Um, so, I mean, how do you feel about this? Obviously as a Ravens fan, I can't imagine this was super like, yeah, our defense did good. Like, obviously you don't, you still don't have a lot of confidence. I know how you think basically. <laughs> well, let me finish that thought on floor as the jets may hire him before the season's over. You could really use him. Right. There you go. Try him away. Um, yeah. The Ravens, I mean, they, their defense keeps getting beat in the same manner over the middle of the field. They're just, they just don't have, uh, you know, presence to stop those, those slants, those, you know, mid tier passes. Burrow just carved them up until they needed the one play. They got the one yeah. play and uh, I forget it was in the fourth quarter overtime. Marlon Humphrey makes the pick. I mean, yeah. What a, what a bizarre game. Hey, I picked Lamar over 200 passing yards. That was the lock of the century, right? 348, four touchdowns. I mean, it was a fun game. It's a stressful game to watch because you're yeah. going back and forth and it's like, well, is it who's, who has the ball last? And then you fumble in overtime and I don't even know what to make of it. All I know is, you know, the Ravens are now tied for first. They get a division win on the road. Um, Jackson puts up good numbers. I want to try to stay positive. They, they finally had a hundred yard receiver. Zay Flowers had his biggest game of the year. Um, Obviously, Chase went off. They, him and Higgins, really, like the two of them, they just couldn't stop him. I mean, I don't know how – I don't know what they're going to do to really fix it at this point. I, I, I don't – you know, they they seem to have a propensity to give up points and yards in fourth quarters of games, but um, they needed a little luck on their side. They needed Tucker to get back to normal. He's missed some kicks this year, so hitting the 56-yarder uh, to tie the game – that was huge, not just obviously for the Ravens in the game, but for his confidence and um, and then a mere chip shot in overtime to win it. So, yeah, I, I'm just trying to stay focused on the fact that the Ravens are tied for first at this point, given what their defense has done. I'll give you something um, that came out of this game. Zach, uh, Zach Taylor, is his seat is boiling. Running three runs into the pile when – you want to get, you know, 10, 15 yards for your kicker. Like I see all these fans talking about, oh, he should have made it. It's, you know, it's 53, like it's the NFL. Like that's not a gimme. And as a coach, your job is to put your players in position to succeed. That includes trusting your quarterback to not turn the football over. Joe Burrow, you have to put the team on his back and say, go get us yards. Go make this a chip shot. Asking your kicker to make a 53 yarder in overtime to win the ball game. That's just that's asking a lot. And I would say that's about a coin flip in that situation. That specific situation is about a coin flip that he actually makes that field goal. It's very inexcusable that when it's tied in overtime, you're at the 38 yard line and you have one of the best quarterbacks in football that you can't even get a first down in that situation. Uh, you're it's right. It's not even you that can't. they can't, it's that they didn't try. They didn't try and that they, they, entrusted their kicker in that situation where a miss gives Baltimore great field position. I know McPherson's a very good kicker, but again, just at any time that's a dicey proposition, especially in a, in a sudden death 
uh, scenarios. Yeah, I would say Taylor could be in trouble. I mean, look, he's had a great run, uh, got the Bengals to a Super Bowl. I thought he coached, uh, he did a phenomenal job when he outcoached Andy Reid in the 2021 AFC Championship game. But it's a, the NFL is a what have you done for me lately league. And they missed the postseason last year because Burrow's injury. Okay, I get it. But now you have Burrow back playing uh, at a really high level and mm-hmm. you're one and four. So something's off there. And uh, I don't know. The, the Bengals, I feel like they're pretty patient with coach. They Like, I don't know. I don't know if it's because they accept. Hugh, Hugh Jackson yeah. had like 17 years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, not that long, yeah. but he had a long ass time. They had some some rough years in the 90s and even parts of 2000. Obviously, oh, you, you mean Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis, I'm sorry. I, I yeah, They were yeah. coaching at the same time. They were bad Hugh at the Jackson exact same time. across the state, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think it'd have to get really bad for him to get fired this year in season. But if it ends up, you know, they win six or seven games at the end of the year, yeah, it's possible Taylor could be gone. They are also on track to have a top five pick with the Jacksonville Jaguars as well, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, Panthers, Bears, not much to say at this one. I, I feel like it's hard to really gauge a quarterback um, on how they play against the Panthers, but. Caleb Williams did exactly what he needed to do. He did exactly what should have been expected of him. He had some good throws too. So I would say this is a big win for Caleb Williams and and his supporters. I I always say this about a young team that's looking to make strides. Win the games you're supposed to win. This is a game that the Bears are supposed to win. Great. They won it. They won it convincingly. Caleb Williams went over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. He was only sacked once. Very efficient. Um, Get him some confidence. He's won three out of his first five NFL games. Uh, Andy Dalton kind of back to being Andy Dalton. Bryce Young got some snaps in this game too. I mean, the Panthers are a mess. It's a shame because Chuba Hubbard had seven and a half yards of carry, but Panthers are the Panthers, man. They got their their one win because you predicted it, and now they're back to normal. Well, my prediction attached to that was they would also take a dive after yeah. they beat the Raiders. So even, even better, even better. And I'm I'm more right than I ever have been. I'm I'm going to hold on to mm-hmm. this for the next year and a half. I, I <laughs> said I told my dad I was like. That win, the Panthers win, was the one I needed to be back because my bets were horrible. Now I'm ten and two in my in the last two weeks. I'm pretty good, and, and my fantasy we're, we're teams have won run. some games. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 giving ourselves some real credibility here with our picks recently, for sure. Yeah. Oh, it'll come back down. It'll even out. At least for me, it'll even out. <laughs> yeah. Um, me too. You're 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 smarter than I am. Uh, Dolphins uh, Patriots, gross game, disgusting. Uh, I guess I guess we're gonna see Drake May next week. That's all I can really say about this. Yeah, that that announcement coming today from Gerard Mayo. I mean, I get it. Brissett's numbers were modest. He doesn't have a ton to work with, really. Uh, I guess Miami they needed to win. I mean, the, the Tyler Huntley again. I mean, neither quarterback going to two hundred yards, but the Dolphins ran it really well. They got they they leaned on the run. Forty one carries, one hundred ninety three yards. It's kind of what they have to do right now with their quarterback yeah. situation. I think. Mike McDaniel's seat could be hot, so he probably needed this game more than Gerard Mayo, first-year coach who's one and four with a bad team. We kind of expect that. McDaniel needs to to get these wins where he can, kind of like what we said with the Bears, yeah. win the games you're supposed to win. I used to really look forward to Dolphins-Patriots games during the Brady era. They were always entertaining, um, not this one. Yeah, I think every game proves just how valuable Tua is as well. I think we yeah. really underestimated it because they are horrible without Tua, and they have the weapons. So there's clearly a missing piece here. Um, mm-hmm. Browns commanders, Kevin Stefanski needs to quit. He is in a horrible position as a head coach. He is a good head coach, and he is just, I mean, he's either being forced to play Deshaun Watson or he's playing Deshaun Watson out of spite to <laughs> say, fuck you, you made me get this guy. Now you're going to see every single every single snap of him. Um, I will say the uh, the Deshaun Watson clip of him walking off the field that was because of twelve men on the field, um, so they were just going to take the take a false start I think on the play anyways. Uh, but awful. Jaden yeah. Daniels looks good. That's good. <laughs> he looks great. Um, uh, I'm actually excited. I'm going to the Ravens Commanders game on Sunday, so looking forward to seeing Lamar and Jaden oh, yeah. go head to head. Commanders not only winning games they're supposed to, they're winning by a lot. I mean, this is yeah, yeah it's easy to point to the Browns and say how bad Watson is, which he, he has been. And uh, Cleveland taking a major step back after a nice season last year. But the commanders are 
They're putting up a ton of points. This kid, Daniels, is getting a lot of confidence each week. Uh, threw one bad pick early in the game in the red zone, shook it off, came back, put up great numbers. You know, what, three, 320 uh, combined passing and rushing. Um, this is exciting. Commanders are, I think, the biggest surprise team early in the season here. And, um, yeah, he's a rookie quarterback. Yeah, he's going to have some days that aren't going to be great. But I don't see why the commanders can't keep uh, keep going. And uh, at least, it, you know, teams are going to adjust and they're going to have to adjust too. But it's been really exciting to watch Daniels progress. Speaking of surprises, this is the exact opposite of that. The Jacksonville Jaguars defeat the Indianapolis Colts mm. in Jacksonville. Um, Joe Flacco put up a fight, but I think Trevor Lawrence took a big step forward in his confidence. He looked good. I'll say that he had 371 or 371, 372 in the air. Um, he was, he made some mistakes, but he overcame them and, and drove them down when they needed to. Um, I will say Shane Steichen did say that Anthony Richardson is the starting quarterback until they change. Cause people don't understand a raw quarterback, you have to hold his hand. They're saying, oh, you're going to take away his best weapon. Yes, you take away his legs until he learns to protect himself. You have to hold his hand through this process of development so he can develop as a passer because he clearly can't protect himself. Protecting yourself, I mean, you can learn that shit probably in practice. I mean, and again, he's going to learn to protect himself when he's um, – when he's, you know, in the game as well, and he maybe has to run to extend a play or something. But Joe Flacco, just first off, if you want to win a football game, I think Joe Flacco is the guy right now. If you're caring about winning games, Joe Flacco is the one that will win you games. If you care about the development of a quarterback, change up the play calling so he can actually have a chance to develop because he's not going to have a chance to develop if he's sitting on the sidelines because you're play calling for Patrick Mahomes when he's not Patrick Mahomes yet. Or Lamar. I would I think you would compare him more to Lamar. Yeah, Flacco's numbers were great. 33 for 44, 359, three touchdowns. I know Jackson's Still elite. defense is <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, big win for Lawrence. I mean, Jacksonville was the last winless team. Talk about seat being hot. I mean, if if Doug Peterson and the Jags lose this game, he may have just been gone on Monday. He would have been i I'm I'm confident he would have been fired, yeah. especially because they were up 14 points yeah. at one point in this yeah. game. Yeah, if you if you give that game away. Uh, to, you know, I, I, I love Flacco, but even just to say backup quarterback, that yeah. that wouldn't have gone over well. But Lawrence put up great numbers, like you said, efficient, you know, yardage, a uh, couple touchdown passes. So maybe, just maybe, he gets it going and Jacksonville can turn this thing around a little bit. Yeah. Um, staying in the AFC South, the Texans walk it off on the Bills. Um, I'm going to be honest, what the fuck were the Bills doing? deep in their own territory at the end of that game. You you have come back. You're playing with house money at this point. Play for overtime. They, they took three deep shots, didn't even try to run the football, didn't try to throw it short just to run time off the clock. And now you're punting out of your own end zone. No, no shit you lost this game. They completely mismanaged the end of this game. Allen did not look good, but, you know, you're going to have bad days. Um, but the management at the end of this game, they could have easily won this game in overtime, and they just mismanaged it. Well, they, the argument was they shouldn't have even been in that position in the first case, the first place, because Houston outgained them by almost 150 yards. Yeah. Allen was nine for 30. I mean, yeah, the play calling was horrible. McDermott took responsibility for it. But, you know, I, this Bills team, man, they got exp I think they just got exposed by the Ravens Sunday night. I, I just don't think Josh Allen is that good. I just don't. I, I, I know he's an exciting player. But I don't see enough evidence that he's and – he, and that it's certainly that he's got the pieces around him to lead this team to a championship. And it's a, kind of a shame because the guy is a very exciting quarterback to watch. Yeah. But Houston, they're, they're winning ugly. You know, they, their one loss was ugly. But they're winning these close games. You, you kind of feel like they should be really, you know, with the talent they have. But they're finding ways to win, which is also encouraging. And Stroud put up really good numbers. Almost let this game get away. They had, I yeah. think, what a twenty to three or seventeen to three lead. But you know, D'Amico Ryan's, he's got the culture. They've got, and and by the way, I think the best year of any kicker right now is Kaimi Fairbairn, fifty nine yarder to walk it off. They, uh, it was twenty to three in the third quarter yeah, after Fairbairn made a forty seven yard field goal. Um, so they did blow that lead. Uh, Raiders Broncos. The Bronco. The Broncos are okay. <laughs> yeah, they're good. I mean, they're an okay team. 
I mean, Sean Payton, he, he didn't panic. He had a bad year last year, and it kind of looked like, well, he was throwing stones at Nathaniel Hackett, and maybe you know, it wasn't so easy in Denver. But now, yeah, it's only five games, but Bo Nix put up good numbers. You know, not, not amazing, but he was efficient, didn't turn the ball over. They had good balance in the run game, and uh, Denver's three and two. I don't think they're going to challenge the Chiefs for the division title, of course, no. but maybe they challenge for a wild card berth. Really helps to have a good a good coach. I don't love Sean Payton as a guy. He's a little, you know, a little arrogant, full of himself. But Bounty Gate, um, Bounty, yeah, yeah, I'm not he's a just just not a huge fan of him. But I think he's a good football coach. And the Raiders, man, what are they doing? I mean, they quarterback situation. I, I like Antonio Pierce, but they're gonna, you know, Adams is gonna be gone almost certainly, and now you got to decide between bad and worse with Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. I mean, come on. How, I mean, Jesus Christ, how quickly has there been like a peak and then an absolute rock bottom? Because they peak, you know, you beat the Ravens and it's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this team might actually be something. And then you lose to the Panthers. Devontae Adams wants out. Now you lose to the Broncos. Like you get the shit kicked out of you by a Broncos team that I think everyone knows is not fantastic. I mean, I've never seen such a, such a, a a switch from super high to super low. Yeah. Um, Cardinals 49ers, uh, Brock Purdy. This was a win for the Brock Purdy is, is a uh, system quarterback crowd, I guess, um, because his picks, it's hard to, because his picks in the game, they are difficult to kind of blame on him. He didn't really throw them in the best positions, but they were tipped up and just in weird situations. But, he had to be better, and he wasn't. And this has been a test for him without those big weapons, and he has failed, I would say. I think that's maybe a D. I, I'd give him a D because they're two and three. You have little margin for error now as well because mm -hmm. Seattle isn't – Seattle's not a bad football team. The Rams are not hor a horrible football team. The Cardinals are frisky. This division's up for grabs again. Yeah, I just think the CMC injury, not having him around, just changes so much about the 49ers. and. Little bit of a Super Bowl hangover. I mean, how many times can this team go to the postseason, and get close, and just not be a little discouraged? But hey, good for Arizona. That's a big win for the Cardinals. Remember last year, late in the year, they beat the Eagles on the road. It felt like they were kind of coming around, and and then they, uh, you know, had a, a a good start. They almost beat Buffalo, and then I think they won their second game, and now they they were kind of fading again. So maybe they get back in it. Kyler Murray played well. He uh, he ran for eighty three yards. I mean, so yeah, big win for the Cardinals. Also, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is just a, I mean, he's a game changer when he's on the field. Like, he is already just a monster. You can literally watch the game and you can point him out because you're like, that guy is so much better, so much bigger than everyone else. Um, he is a monster. I think he had, a, he had a big catch to, like, I think put the game away as well or come close to putting mm -hmm. the game away. So he's just, he's crazy. Um, the Packers hold off the Rams at that Apple store and, and, LA. Um, I just, I hate that stadium. I can't stand oh, watching a football awful. game in that stadium. Yeah. Awful. It's LA. It sums up LA. I mean, hopefully the fans are a little more behaved than Dodgers fans, yeah. but uh, you know, I, oh God. Yeah. It's ugly. I mean, the Rams are, yeah, they had a nice season last year. Obviously the Puka Nakua injury, Cooper Cup. I mean, it's not, they're, they're playing with a pretty diminished cast in yeah. fairness. Um, but Packers, you know, the weird season, they've had to go Malik Willis for a few weeks. Now loves back and, just Packers very quietly are three and two. It feels like you know, we're not really talking a lot about Green Bay, and yet they're very much in the thick of what's a what's a really good division, which every team is over five hundred in the North. So um, I was especially happy that the Packers held them off because that was the last bet I needed to have a perfect week. I had the under forty seven and a half, forty eight, whatever it was in yes. that game. So, and I'm sure it was almost all Packers fans, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, Giants Seahawks. The Giants go in, stun the Seahawks. Just someone like you said, someone left a comment on uh, on our stuff saying, "Oh, they didn't stun us. Like we we just bull rush." I was like, and they said we were without our our top running back and wide receiver. I was like, yeah, that is more stunning that they went in to Seattle across the country and won a game that they were seven and a half point dogs. And I know I bet them at six and a half, but they yeah. were they ended up finishing at seven and a half. Um, but cool. I mean, it's cool. The Giants are frisky. What a weird game. I and mean, they faced their old friend, Geno Smith. He puts up good numbers. He ran four times for 72 yards. We don't think of Geno as a running quarterback, but 
How about Tyrone Tracy? 7.2 yards a carry. They ran the ball. Jones didn't make mistakes, put up solid numbers. Like Slayton had a big game. Special teams finishes it off with the block field. I mean, that was like a, an all around good game for the Giants, which, you know, gives you hope. Maybe they can. I mean, they hung with Dallas. Obviously, the first game against Minnesota was ugly, but now we look at it and say, well, Minnesota's undefeated. So maybe that's not such a big deal. Um, yeah. Could have beat the Commanders. You know, they held them out of the end zone that game, but they gave up seven field goals. So, yeah, and for Seattle, eh, just back to earth a little bit. Had that nice 3-0 and start. I think they're still in the thick of things because they're still in, for, in first place, right? Aren't they? Talk uh, about. Are they, they they're are at least the fighting Arizona. for it. What? They're at least fight. They're they're in a they're, no. They're battle. in first because Arizona and they San are Fran first. are two and three, and the Rams are like one and four. So Seattle, the least kind of by about, default. <laughs> yeah, by default. But hey, first year head coach, um, and you're in first place after five games. Still not too bad. Cowboys Steelers weird weather game. People were saying the NFL ha- every NFL stadium should have domes. No, shut yeah. up. You're a loser. You're you're a dumbass if you think that. Um, I love gross games. But, uh, I mean, the Cowboys are just not – they're not the Cowboys. They're not, they're not the Cowboys that we expect where they're going to come out and bull rush teams in the early part of the year and then start to struggle down the stretch. Um, we're just yeah. – yeah. And they're the Steelers actually, fell back to earth. They're, they're Steelers fell back, back to earth. I mean, they had a chance, a legit chance, one play from being 4-1. and one. But it's actually kind of nice to see the Cowboys playing with a little more grit and a little more of like a scrappy team than kind of this, oh, big flashy, put up big numbers, star players all around. I mean, Prescott came through. He got the winning drive. He got the, the winning score when he needed. It wasn't pretty. Weather was bad. It didn't end until almost one in the morning. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Pittsburgh, look, we know that it's Mike Tomlin that makes this team go and then the defense, but they're they're going to have games like this because they don't score a ton of points. So. Um, I would say that Dallas should feel pretty good about itself, honestly, given that it's not a very explosive team, but they're three and zero on the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's an accomplishment. Um, and mm-hmm. they usually, the road was, was kind of their struggle in the past. Yeah. They were obviously very good at home. They had 16 straight home wins, something like that until the Ravens ended it. Mm-hmm. Um, Saints chiefs Monday night, Arch Manning was on the Manning cast. Paul Rudd was on the Manning cast. Was. Paul Rudd looks like he's still 30. Like it was disgusting. I was looking at him. I was like, dude, this guy just doesn't, he does not age. Um, Arch Manning getting up there. I'll say that he was or Archie, Archie Manning. Um, he's getting up there. I remember when he was like, probably in like his sixties going to the Colts games and seeing him there, he looked like still, still a spry, spry chicken, you know, spry guy. But now he's getting up there. Um, but, uh, the chiefs, I, I tried to watch this game. It, it just, it felt like the chiefs were going to win from from this yeah. first snap yeah, it just no, kind of felt like it yeah no Taysom hill for the saints that changed the dynamic of the mm-hmm. offense Derek carr only has one career win at arrowhead i mean chiefs have won 10 straight games where they haven't scored more than 27 points that's one shy of an nfl record to me the reason they've got a really good chance to three peat as much as we don't want to see it their defense is ridiculous they did not have not given up 27 points in a game since uh the super bowl against the eagles Oh, so um, it's been, what, 17, 18, Well, 19, 21 games last year, five games this year. We're talking about 26 straight games and then more. That's insane. Because in the regular season, I don't know, I think they gave up 28 to Denver later in like early December of 2022. But point being, man, the fact that the Chiefs have a defense and their offense is still figuring it out. I used to say like in the Brady era, you just get to them in those first few weeks because that because they're going to turn it on. They, I don't yeah. think they're going to go undefeated, but I think they're going to win 14 or 15 games. And, and yeah. it's just bad news for the rest of the league. Um, all right. We're going to go through. We're going to pick really quickly. we got about five minutes here. Um, we're going to start Thursday night, 49ers Seahawks in Seattle. I feel like that game is like always on Thursday night for some reason, mm-hmm. the, the 49ers Seahawks game. Um, but who you got here? What's the spread? Are we doing the spread? I'm just picking, picking, oh, uh, picking the winner. Yeah. Uh, I actually think Seattle. I, I don't know. I think this Niners slide might go on another week. I, I, maybe it's sentimental and I want Mike McDonald to win, but I'm going to go Seattle. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to roll with Seattle here too. Um, for the 49ers really haven't given me a lot to uh, be confident in, I guess. Yeah. Um, London game, Jags and bears at nine 30. Um, yeah, stupid London. 
I, I don't know. The Jags like playing in London. Um, they got a win, but I'm going to go with the Bears. I like the I just like what the Bears have got going on. Yeah. Um, I'm going to roll with the Bears. I, I think they're feeling it. I, I would love to see a 4-2 and two Caleb Williams. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a test, but Jacksonville's secondary is still atrocious. I mean, Joe Flacco, for as elite as he is, he got – I mean, he tore them apart. And the only reason we didn't probably score more was because our offense, like they just decided to stop trying to throw it deep. Um, but if they just keep taking deep shots, they're going to win this uh, this ball game. Cardinals Packers in Green Bay. Mm. This is an interesting one. Yeah, um, I think I got to go with Green Bay. I mean, I think Arizona's making strides, but maybe they maybe they have a little bit of an emotional letdown after uh, beating the Niners on the road. Yeah, I'm going to stick with you. I think at Lambeau, you know, this is. I feel like the Packers are just so good at Lambeau. Like it's it's hard, especially as a West Coast team, to go into Lambeau and win a game. Um, and I think you hit the nail on the head with the emotional letdown. Uh, Colts Titans. I think Richardson's going to be starting. This is in Tennessee. I don't know what to expect from either of these teams. I really can't get a gauge on either one. Yeah, th- this feels like the ultimate toss up. I mean, Flacco's been playing well. The Titans have. One win, but they've also played really great defense. Um, and their mm, one win was against like Miami. Miami, was yeah, Miami. obviously yeah. awful. Yeah, uh, I am always gonna. I always like Joe Flacco, so give me the Colts. Again, I don't know if it's gonna be Flacco or Richardson. Um, my tradition is to pick against the Colts, so I'm going Titans here because um, we just we do seem to struggle a lot against Tennessee. Obviously, last year was different because uh, mm-hmm. we did sweep them, but. Um, Texans Patriots. This would have been the Sunday night game, probably about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Matt Schaub, Tom Brady, Arian Foster, uh, but now it's Drake May and C.J. Stroud. So uh, Texans just got to keep going. They they got to win the games they're supposed to. Drake May first NFL start. Good luck, Houston. I'm gonna be a sicko and I'm gonna pick the Patriots here. I feel like they're is just something I feel like you're going to get a little bit of a letdown from tennis or uh, Houston. You know, that was a big win against Buffalo. That was a, I would still say they were considered the best team in the AFC at that point. And that's, that's when they needed to win. And they, they won. Um, I think there's gonna be a letdown. I think, again, this is my stupid brain of that logo, looking at that Pat's logo. I'm like, it mm-hmm. just makes sense. This just makes sense. I think it's gonna be a really gritty game and it's in new England. Um, so I'm going to roll with them. Plus, like, those seven-point favorites, those haven't been super successful either uh, all season. So, I just can't uh, get over the Pats have scored 62 points in five games, so <laughs> just don't know. Yeah, that, that is hard to get over. Rust, I mean, if they win, good. they're not going to win by a yeah, – it's not going to be a high-scoring game. Right. Um, Buck Saints in New Orleans. Um, Carr banged up. Bucks ticked off. Give me the Bucks. Yeah, the Bucks especially – the only thing I would say is because they're traveling early because yeah, of the hurricane. They're over that. there now. Um, I don't think that's going to have a big effect. I think they're going to see it as a do it for Florida type of yeah. thing. Um, yeah. And they're going to just kick the shit out of them. Um, Browns, Eagles. Philly is a nine point favorite in Philly. Oh. I, I, Philly's just such a weird team. I mean, but the Browns are going so badly. I, I definitely could see this being close. For some reason, like the yeah. like the spread feels like a safer bet to take the the Browns, but I I still got to go with Philly. They've had a week off now. They kind of been up and down these first couple of weeks. Have a negative point differential, but I think it's gonna be a close game actually. But I I'll still go with Philly. Last year was it the bye that when they kind of shut down when they played really horribly? Was it after the bye? Well, they I think they beat the Chiefs off their bye, and then they had that crazy win over the Bills, but then after that got slaughtered by the Niners, and that okay. started their kind of free fall. So, uh, I mean, they, they always used to win off a bye because Andy Reid historically has been amazing off a bye. Good luck That's to 49ers true. in two weeks. Uh, but um, I think, yeah, look, let Philly fans sort of focus on the Phillies for a week, lay off the Eagles, they'll come back refreshed. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll with the Eagles here too. Just Deshaun Watson is, they yes. are not good. Just they are such a horrible offense. Commanders, Ravens, you will be in attendance. I'll be there. Um, Jaden Daniels, Lamar Jackson. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't know how to pick this game. The commander's defense is just not, not good, but the Ravens don't have a very good defense right now. Yeah, the, that's the thing. I mean, the Ravens are going to have a real test, but they did a good job with Josh Allen, although we'll see, you know, when we saw Josh Allen not look so good last week. But um, I, I think, I mean, at some point, I think the commanders have to come back to earth a little, but this is going to be a close game. It's going to be a very entertaining game. I'm excited to watch it. I'll begrudgingly take the Ravens, but uh, hopefully, I mean, their defense has got, I mean, Washington's defense has done a really nice job this year. It's kind of not been talked about. And yeah, they've had a couple games, but then, you know, they they did a good job with Arizona and Cleveland, like the games are supposed to do well in. So um, Ravens in a thriller. Yeah, that six and a half line is a lot, though. It is. I, I would, if I'm taking anything, I'm taking Commanders plus six and a half. Uh, but I feel like the Ravens, you can't be three and three. They, this is a big game. The Commanders, you're playing with house money here. Yeah. Um, I think there's a, a lot more desperation out of Baltimore. So I'm going there. Um, Chargers, Broncos. I mean, what, what, is there really anything fun about this game? No, no. It, Chargers stink. They always struggle with the Broncos. I'm going Denver. <laughs> Yeah, I'll roll with Denver here. Actually, you know what? Just just to do it, I'll, I'll go Chargers just to go against you. Um, Steelers, Raiders. History, history game. This is a big history game. Big, good uniform matchup, too. Yeah, big history game, but um, I don't know. Raiders quarterback situation so messed up, and, and now they got to face a pretty good Steelers defense. I think I think I'll go Pittsburgh. Yeah, the entire locker room in Vegas is just a nightmare right now. I'm yeah. going Pittsburgh as well. Lions-Cowboys rematch from mm-hmm. uh, last year's obviously crazy. I don't remember what happened. There was a bad call, right, no, at the end of last year's game? Something on the two-point conversion or whatever. Yeah. Um, hmm. Dallas has yet to win at home. Lions have only played one road game. Um, I'm going to take – the Lions, but I don't know. I could see Dallas winning it. Dallas has been incredibly they're, – they're not living – they're lackluster. They, they have not lived up to the yeah. expectations. This is a game you would kind of expect them to win. They're 3-2 and two off, a, off a Sunday night game. You know, that was in a, a gross game. Now you get to play on the fast track, basically. You get to play indoors, no rain, nothing like that. Um, but I think Detroit off a bye – especially kind of all the drama that's been going on with Dan Campbell specifically. I really like them. He's going to come out, have them ready to bite kneecaps off. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm torn. I, I could see this being a trap, though, for Detroit. But so I, if it's three and a half, I might take Dallas to lose by a field goal. But I'll go officially Detroit for now. Yeah. Uh, Falcons, Panthers, for some reason, this is at 425. Um, but, I mean, the Falcons feels like a gimme. Yeah, yeah. And Falcons minus six feels even more like a gimme. Yeah, yeah. Getting it done in division games, the Falcons. So give me Atlanta. This is a weird one. For Sunday night, Bengals-Giants. I don't really know what the NFL was thinking when they put this one here. Commanders-Ravens, but the window passed for that. Um, Yeah. Bengals got to get – I mean, the Bengals have got to get it going at some point. I I don't know. I just can't see them continuing to lose, be one and five, if Burrow's going to play that well. So I'm going to go Cincy. I mean, you would think they could have flexed Lions, Cowboys, Steelers, Raiders. Is I, I would rather see than sure. Bengals, Giants. Yeah, on this one, this is just awful. This is so bad. Um, or Lion, yeah, Lions, Cowboys. I mean, give me Saints, Bucks over well, that. Again, the Ravens as a one o'clock game was a candidate. Ravens as a one o'clock game. Yeah, that makes no sense. I mean, that's obviously the one you would do first. Um, but weird. And then Aaron Rodgers, Monday Night Football. Against the Bills, <laughs> what are we doing here? Why are they doing Monday Night Football at MetLife again against the Bills? Redemption. Who knows how the Jets are going to respond first game with an interim head coach, though. I mean, it's always weird. Sometimes teams come out and it's like, man, they really hated Salah. They're going to do great, or they're like, yeah, they're they're dysfunctional. You know, they they have to had a week, you know, preparing with a new coach. So. Ah, uh, but the Bills have been playing so crappy lately. I mean, even even more so than the Jets. This is kind of an ugly game. I don't know. Buffalo's favored by two and a half, which just makes me want to pick the Jets. <laughs> yeah. Um, is Nathaniel Hackett going to get fired? Because I don't know how he's kept his job, like, through all of this. John Payton's going to hire him to be a coordinator, I heard. No, I don't know. Um, I, I have no idea. I mean, usually... Uh, 
Well, when a new coach comes in, like a full time new coach, they hire their own. But I don't know how it works with, you know, interim coaches. Do they fire the other assistants? Because they're basically an assistant themselves. So I remember Jeff Ulbrich playing the Niners. So it makes me feel old. But um, yeah, I'll just take the Jets. I don't know. To me, I just flip a coin and pick a side. Jeff Saturday's right there. He is he's right there. Ready. He's got, he's by the phone. Yeah. He's waiting by the phone. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, bye week teams as well. Chiefs, Rams. Dolphins and Vikings. A win for the rest of the league that the Chiefs aren't playing this week. So, I think it's a win for the rest of the league that the Dolphins aren't playing. I That's don't want to have to look at that offense ever. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Um, I know this was short. We've done a lot of long ones. Um, hopefully, we'll have Max on maybe in the next couple of weeks. Yep. Hopefully, I have power next week so we can record. Yes. You never know. Um, but again, Basically. make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thanks for 1,000 subscribers, 10,000 followers, and we will see you next week. Peace.